who clothes us and shelters us and feeds us, everything that we do to the air, all the chemicals that we pump into the air, we breathe in. The animals breathe in, life breathes in. Everything that we do to the water, we do to life, because water is life, the root of all life. So it's not just us, and we're all connected, and we have to respect everything that lives on this earth that shares the same earth that we do. Um, I was taught at the times when my good friend Chichi, they would go down to the beaches and they would eat the herring off the rocks. And it, it makes me realize that now when I do the same thing, I, if you go up and pick a clam off the rock and off the seashore, you have to worry about things like cancers and getting sick. It's not as pristine as it used to be. And through the time period of about three generations, the land has gone from its pristine beauty of how it was for thousands of years to a polluted ocean full of chemicals. And the practices that my ancestors once did and most of our culture is being lost due to pollution and due to development. So according to the World Proclamation of, of um, the World Proclamation, I can't remember the year right now, but um, it says that unless a treaty has been signed, that we have rights and we can stand and hold our ground and say and give our consent whether a development is going to go through or not, like the Keystone XL or the Enbridge Pipeline, or Pipe Dreams as I like to call them. <laughs> <laughs> and most of BC, and as we are standing on unceded territory, and we have that right. And that's what I don't know more is all about. It's about us standing up and speaking up. We've never really been asleep. And now more than ever, we're awake and we're standing up. <laughs> At the conference, um, the UN um, conference on the environment, Rio Plus 20, and <coughs> it's once a decade conference where world leaders would get together to speak about sustainability and providing a better future for the many generations to come. Well, I attended that conference and I was, I was all excited because I was expecting so much from this conference, but when I got into the conference, um, they had these huge black buses that were or organized by the people who are organizing the conference that that run people in, and they said Petrobras on the side, which is the number one Brazilian oil company. <laughs> they were selling specialty UN diamonds inside a sustainable conference, <laughs> which is a huge slap in the face to these people who have come thousands of miles from their home um, advocating <coughs> against diamond mining, and so. And really, the results of what came out of that conference were really denying First Nations people and Indigenous people of their rights. There's basically another conference saying, okay, here, press, we're making a huge conference about what you want us to do, polar bears, whatever. Just give that story to people. We're good guys now, right? Basically the same sort of thing. So it was more like a woulda, shoulda, coulda conference to change. <laughs> and so I think it's so important that I don't know more that we're standing here today because we're not, we're not waiting for our governments to change things. We're not waiting for the authorities to change things any anymore. Because we know now if we keep waiting for the next day to come, we're denying the fact that if we keep waiting for change, it's never going to come. So. We stand united today to put an end to the pipe dreams 
and to the rights that were being denied. We stand united. Thank you.